Yeah, first off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessor, lecture, uh, transmitting masters, lectures, and everyone else here today uh, for this opportunity to talk about this topic. Um, yeah, again, this is actually, this is, yeah, it basically only Dow cultivation does not miss, you can say, does not mislead us you know, take us down the wrong path or guide us in the wrong direction. Okay, so, so basically, it, <laughs> that implies that anything else kind of uh, takes us kind of not in the, that the the direction of transcending life and death. That is to you know to become uh, achieve nirvana, uh, transcend this, uh, the cycle of re reincarnation. All right, okay. Uh, okay, so again, this is, once again, this is a, uh, basically, holy teacher's guidance um, to, uh, looks like it's also to staff members, um, so, but that's okay, I mean, it, you know, certainly all the principles apply to everyone, all cultivators, beginning, you know, beginners and more, you know, senior level, <laughs> uh, uh, long time cultivators, uh, uh, they apply equally. It's just that maybe, you know, when Holy Teacher talks to uh, uh, the, the, the Tao, uh, well, his disciples, basically, his disciples, um, that it depends on the level that his disciples are at, then he might use, he might have greater, you can say, greater expectations, right? So obviously, if we're more advanced, then uh, Holy Teacher would expect more from us. Okay, so so that's, just keep that in mind that, you know, that's, this is, um, Holy Teacher again is is trying to is talking, giving guidance to staff members. Okay, so not just your your average person who just received the Tao. All right. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, so um, moral integrity or virtue. Okay, so we'll kind of use these two words inter basically interchangeably. All right. It's the basis of cultivation and practice. Okay. Uh, and so, so no matter what we are involved in, whether it's the mundane or, uh, you know, or the worldly matters or holy or divine matters, um, saintly matters, right? <clears throat> we would be able to deal with them in harmony. Okay, so uh, even if we endure hardships or slander, uh, we can transform it into something that's the, uh, that that's ordinary. Okay, so you know, we, we're we're not gonna take things too seriously, like these hardships or, or you know, slander or any, anything else that comes our way, um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll just uh, treat it very, take it very lightly, okay, not, and definitely not personally, right? Um, hold on a second, let me, okay, all right, uh, okay, so uh, basically, you know, so, so that virtue, uh, it's basically that perfect state of, <laughs> it's our perfect state. I mean, the virtue, you can say, is is the manifestation of our Buddha nature, which is, you know, the perfect, uh, the pure, um, uh, true self. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, um, now, the, now here it says, uh, the, you know, virtue is, <laughs> this, virtue is not alone. There must be neighbors. Okay, so... Now, what does this mean? Uh, basically, you know, uh, similar to the idea of like attracts like, okay, so, you know, birds of a feather flock together, right? Uh, a person of virtue will have good companions, right? Now, even if they are not that good in the beginning, right, these companions, uh, they will gradually be influenced by, you know, the person of virtue, and they'll improve and become good, okay, or better. Uh, on the other hand, right, if they... Uh, let's say these people are far away uh, from us, then, you know, they they may have their own ideas. And so, uh, you know, it's harder to influence. It's basically, if people are far away from us, uh, the, it's going to be hard to harder to influence them, right, um, through, with our virtues, for example. You know, because they, you know, they, maybe they don't see it, right, <laughs> because they don't, uh, you know, they're far away. They, they, don't, they don't see it. We don't, we don't interact in person, right? So, uh, so we have to, but we have to cultivate even better, okay, uh, even, um, yeah, more better um, 
to to possibly have uh, an influence on on those people. Um, all right. So, uh, but but anyway, someone who has moral integrity or virtue will always have uh, you know kind of like these companions, uh, if you will, both near and far. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> okay. So so what kind of person has uh, moral integrity. Now, uh, how can we tell, right? So, right, uh, basically, you know, if, let's say, and one way to tell, I guess, is if you, you know, you do a comparison or contrast or, or, or no, basically, okay, let's say in a situation there's, there's this particularly bad person, you know, in this, uh, among us. And then, so, you know, how that, a uh, person of moral integrity deals with that bad person, right? Uh, then you can see how how they do that, uh, and so basically that that person of moral integrity will uh, manifest, um, you know, his virtues. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. So now, but without having, let's say, there is, you know, you don't have a bad person around, <laughs> um, then. Uh, you know, how can we display the virtue? So in order to nurture our moral integrity, we must stand next to the fire for refinement. So, yeah, it's kind of, you know, we might say, well, yeah, I mean, we, we maybe we think it's kind of unpleasant to be around uh, these people who are not virtuous or not as virtuous, but it is because of them that uh, we can refine ourselves and and basically further develop manifest our virtues okay so just like we were saying before about like bodhisattvas right and uh require uh basically they depend they rely on sentient beings okay sentient beings are the unenlightened the ignorant masses um but they rely on them to become to for their own uh to become achieve, to achieve nirvana right for the bodhisattva to achieve nirvana um, so, uh, in the same way, you know, uh, as you can say at a kind of a more lower level, uh, we have to refine constant. This is, so this is the process of refinement and cultivation, right? Cultivation is not like, oh, we isolate ourselves from, from the world, from all these problems and issues and think that we can, uh, cultivate and become a Buddha. Um, that's not possible. Okay, so it has to go through this process, and even as you know, unpleasant as it may sometimes be, uh, we stay, we have to go through it, and that is the only that's the true test to see if we are, uh, if we can actually uh, perform up to the standard, so to speak. Okay, uh, so uh, so that's very important to understand that you know we trying to run away or you know uh, trying to avoid. Um, these situations does not really help our cultivation. Okay, um, the best way to do it is is we face we face it and we deal with it with <laughs> using our moral integrity, with our virtues. Uh, if we can deal with it satisfactorily in a good way, uh, then you can say that maybe it's then we've we've achieved something. Okay, then then. Anytime we meet that situation again, it won't be a problem. It won't be an issue for us. Okay, so so we have to think of it that way. Okay, so uh, so we also have to fulfill our responsibilities and put aside any personal people issues. Yeah, that that's unfortunately when we're dealing with people uh, of all types, you know, there's going to be those issues. Um, so it's a, you know, Holy Deju says, are we going to go our separate ways just because we have disagreements? Right, in dealing with matters, uh, you know. So he says, just fulfill our responsibilities and put aside any personal issues. Um, would a person who is considered a loyal minister stop being loyal and fulfilling his duties because the king is not good? It is because of the minister's dedication that he is considered a loyal minister. If we have, if we have advice, right, we should say it straightforwardly. Uh, if we have said it once, twice, maybe three times already, and the person does not listen, then we can stop giving that advice. Okay, so, you know, some people, 
yeah, you keep telling them, oh, you got to stop doing this or you got to do this and, and they don't listen. Uh, and we, we can't keep nagging them. Uh, <laughs> that will have kind of a negative uh, effect. Um, okay, a, a, an undesirable effect. So at that point, we can kind of just stop. Uh, but we cannot stay away because of this either, right? So just because they don't listen to that advice, um, it doesn't mean that, oh, we just give up on them and forget about it. You're, <laughs> you're no good. Uh, I'm not your friend anymore or whatever. Okay, so we can't do that. Because our goal is we, if we are uh, like a bodhisattva, right? We, we want to save sentient beings. Now, however ignorant they may be, <laughs> uh, we still, uh, we cannot give up on that. <clears throat> um, now, it may, it's possible that we can't save them in this life, okay? But we have to maintain that good affinity, that affinity that allows them, perhaps in a future life, um, to be ferried by us, okay? Or ferried by someone else. Um, so, so that is why we, ha we can't just run away from it, okay? Or avoid it. Um, on the contrary, so we must stay even closer in order to influence and teach them uh, with our words and deeds. Okay, so yeah, sometimes maybe is we haven't, we just haven't done enough. Maybe we just using words to try to convince them or, or try to change them. But, you know, obviously actions speak louder than words, right? So we should, uh, through our actions, through our conduct, through our behavior, our demeanor, uh, our appearance, um, you know, those probably are more important than, than the words, okay? So especially if they stop listening to our words, our advice, then uh, we, we have to change, you know, change the method, okay? So use our actions, use our uh, conduct to try to uh, change them. <clears throat> um, so therefore, you know, a person who is a loyal minister must be able to make allowances, right? So basically making up for the deficiencies of the king. Right? As long as the king is still in power, the loyal minister must perform his duties well. Right? Being, so uh, I guess there's a saying, right? it says, being a monk for a day, you hit the bell or you know, strike that bell uh, for that day. Okay, so, so as long as we you know, are in that position, then uh, we still have, we have a responsibility. Okay? We have a duty. We can't... Uh, we can't uh, run away from that responsibility. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, so the, all right, these are, there's some like 10, 10 nourishments of cultivation, all right. So to be at ease or free and natural nourishes the Tao or, or Tao cultivation, okay. So um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, you know, so we have to be cultivate um, as if it's very, it's very natural, right? It's very carefree. Uh, cultivation. I mean, if cultivation it feels like we're being uh, restrained and restricted and, and all these things, uh, then then that's not that we're not going to cultivate very well. Okay, so that that's it's it's really it's all. I mean, we've talked about this before. It's all in the mind. It's our mindset. It's our attitude towards uh, cultivation. Right. So if we take the the positive attitude, then then of course we can succeed. If we take a negative attitude, uh, negative view of things, of cultivation, of you know whatever we encounter, then 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 it's going to be difficult. Okay, cultivation then becomes miserable, and who wants that? Okay, no one's going to cultivate. All right, so we have to ch change change that mindset. <clears throat> to have no a natural action nourishes the self nature. Well, a natural I does uh, uway. Uh, we don't, I mean, it's it's basically you know the action. It's unconditional. It's coming. From our the Buddha nature, uh, or you could say coming from the conscience, as uh, doesn't depend on anything else, <clears throat> um, and so, so that is you know part of the Tao cultivation is to to uh, you know get get rid of that the ego. So you can say egoless action. Okay, it's not driven by our ego. Okay, our desires or anything of that. You know those are those are all really. Uh, coming from the ego. <laughs> okay, so uh, void or emptiness and quiescence nourishes the spirit. Yes, so we want to uh, s basically, you know, quiet or, or, or empty our mind, heart and mind, uh, you know, s make it still, right? Uh, that is the, the that state of quiescence is, is what we want to achieve, 
Okay, so that's why we, uh, you know, practice, right? Letting go of all karmic affinities and not giving rise to a single thought. Okay, so so all that uh, basically, you know, and also not letting, you know, these uh, uh, our emotions, desires, etc., you know, the, the, the affect our mind. Okay, so <clears throat> um, purity and stillness and indifference uh, nourishes the heart and mind, right? Again, uh, you know, so again, it's getting getting to that pure and still state. Um, the indifference is basically, it's not really, it, it's like not getting into the, you know, oh, uh, attached to one or the other, this duality stuff. Okay, so, so um, we have to avoid dualistic views and, and thinking, okay? <clears throat> Benevolence and righteousness nourishes the virtue, okay? So, again, these are part of our um, benevolence, right? Well, it's, those are kind of like the, 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 what, you know, part of our constant virtues or constants. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, uh, these are the things that, that we, we basically, we can manifest. Uh, when we manifest them, then uh, that is, uh, you know, it, it's kind of, it's developing our virtues, okay? <clears throat> to have no jealousy or demands uh, nourishes the character, right? So um, jealousy, demands, right? <clears throat> we don't, this is, you know, these jealousy, jealousy comes from like uh, comparisons, right? We, we look at others, oh, we want something that they have. Uh, you know, it's also with desires and greed, I guess, too, can be. Um, demands, we should not <clears throat> try to demand of others, again, in cultivation, the first person we should demand of is ourselves. Okay, so we have to make demands of ourselves, not others. <clears throat> uh, you know, and that, that's part of, you know, the, the getting rid of the four images, right? <clears throat> so uh, to hold to the center one, or the oneness, uh, you know, the, the, basically the Buddha nature, right, nourishes the vital energy. Okay, so um, yeah, again, we have to keep to the middle, to keep to well that the Buddha nature. I mean that that's on one hand you can say or at a more superficial level, it's a mundane level. It's it's talking about kind of the middle way, okay. Uh, but <clears throat> ultimately following that Buddha nature. So you know the things that we were talking about earlier, all these things, you know, if we do that, then it's it's that's coming from the Buddha nature, okay. <clears throat> so uh, to be content and knowing to stop, knowing yeah, knowing to stop, knowing you know when to stop. Uh, nourishes the body. Okay, so uh, we have to be content, right? No greed. Um, uh, we have to know when to stop. Uh, you know, say, oh, I have, I, I've had enough, right? Or, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I made enough money. I, I don't need to keep making millions of dollars. Okay, so uh, we have to know how to stop. Okay, <clears throat> otherwise, you know, we we work we work so hard to to achieve to gain these things, whatever it is. Uh, and at the expense of our body, the health, okay? Uh, to have no thoughts nourishes the life, right? So no thoughts, no whatever, uh, basically, again, that, that kind of empty, you can say, or that, that the blank, well, not blank, but uh, the void, okay? So the, the empty mind, that nourishes the life, okay? So, <clears throat> um, yeah, thoughts, because usually thoughts are, we're, we're talking about thoughts, dualistic, Thinking like thoughts uh, coming from the human heart and mind. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So uh, a pure heart and few desires nourishes the essence. Okay. So right. So that ultimately, you know, we're we're trying to get to this this pure pure heart, not having really any desires, uh, because the desires come from the human heart, um, and so we want this pure heart, which is the we could say the, the divine heart, the heavenly heart the Tao heart, right? And that's what nourishes our essence. So that's really what we need. I mean, you know, so everything that we do as ascension being, when we are pursuing all these virtue, uh, uh, desires and, um, you know, we have all these attachments and we have uh, the, we're, we're basically, and, you know, we're, we're following our emotions, all that, that is really, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, yeah, I won't say it's destroying the essence, but it's it's defiling our our true self, our essence. Okay, it's it's and we're just building up, right? It's just piling on the the, the junk that we need to get rid of later on to achieve enlightenment. Okay, so so uh, this is you know we have to get rid of all that. Right? 
Okay, so when we are committed to heaven, then what we do is the sin of the Bodhisattvas, right? So as long as we are committed to, or basically in acquiescence, or in agreement, or in submission to heaven, or heaven's will, right, then on the path of cultivation, then the works that we are doing, right, is the same as the work that the Bodhisattvas do, right? Uh, even if a person feels alone and helpless, uh, there are many fellow cultivators and Buddhas around us. <clears throat> okay, so to take the journey on the path of cultivation requires uh, meticulous, you know, so fine or detailed realization and deep thoughts and feelings. Uh, deep thoughts, uh, yeah, feelings, uh, step by step. Okay, such a wonderful feeling cannot be described in words. Okay, Holy Teacher always tells us a bosom body, a bosom buddy, a buddy, you know, someone who's really, who's kind of close to us and they're of like mind, right? They're so close that they, they, they know exactly what we're thinking, right? Uh, must be like-minded to be a bosom body, okay, so, buddy. So, uh, but are we benevolent and kind, right? Have we ferried people? Have the heart and mind, do we have the heart and mind to help and to cherish or to love and protect sentient beings, right? If not, then how can we have a bosom buddy okay so um uh this is uh holy juice uh oh by the way okay so sorry this this is kind of the section on being independent and carefree on this path of cultivation okay so um all right <clears throat> okay so now in in uh you know so we you know having received the Tao, uh we we are cultivate uh we <laughs> was just considered cultivators now in the past right uh, the, basically, we would have been called um, this person of Tao. Basically, someone who's accomplished in the Tao. Okay, uh, that's that's because we've received the Tao. Now, in the past, right, the, the cultivators, um, you know, they they haven't, uh, you know, they had to cultivate themselves well uh, to the point of enlightenment, basically, to be able to receive the Tao. Uh, and so we're, you know, we're, we're we're kind of the opposite. We we can receive the Tao first, and then uh, cultivate or learn to cultivate, you know, for the uh, rest of our lives. Uh, but, but still, you know, we, this is what we would be called. Okay. Um, now, so what should our conduct and demeanor be like, right? Uh, to be considered a person of Tao. So holy teacher uses a metaphor for our consideration, right? A person of Tao is always careful and cautious in all matters. Uh, what does it mean to be careful and cautious, right? So, like crossing a river, for example, right? When we are crossing river, uh, I assume it's kind of a relatively shallow river where we can walk across it um, or wade our wade across it. Uh, we don't have to, uh, don't we have to take each step very carefully, right? Uh, because we can't see the bottom, we can't see uh, our our the footing where, where we're putting our feet. Um, you know, assuming that the water is not clear. Uh, therefore, we have to be very careful, like almost take gingerly steps, right, uh, to make sure that we don't slip and fall into the water, right? <clears throat> okay, so uh, so therefore, you know, shouldn't we take each step with the greatest care, right? We, sh we always should use this type of attitude or mentality in everything that we do. So I'll lead you just saying, no matter what, even, you know, that, that it's not a, you know, such a serious or dangerous situation, but we should still have that kind of attitude, right, towards it, that we are very careful okay, in what we do, uh, even if it's the smallest of tasks, okay. Uh, so it's like being awakened with a start, right, being very alert, right, this, <laughs> uh, I know this, this is, this is like, um, you know, once I was driving home late at night, and you know, I was driving long distance, like from LA to San Francisco, and and <laughs> by the by the time I get up to the the San Francisco Bay Area, it's like already you know, I don't think it's like two in the morning or something, and I'm falling asleep, and suddenly uh, I'm kind of drifting off the road, and luckily they have these uh, these like studs on the road side, uh, and then when you run over them, it makes this bumping, you know, it's like little bumps, and so that wakes you up. And so, yeah, that I woke up with a startle and with a start, and that that just kind of got the adrenaline pumping, and so I was very alert. All right, so it's the same thing. Um, so we have to be vigilant and alert, right, as if people are watching, right, so that we do not dare to do anything careless, wrong, or improper, right. So, 
uh, it's one thing, yeah, when people are around us, we, we tend to be a little bit more, maybe more careful, right? Maybe, you know, conscientious, self, self-conscious a little bit. Uh, but when no one else is around, uh, we tend to maybe eh, kind of slack off a bit, you know. Uh, we, and so, but we always have to think that, well, I mean, there may not be people around, but <laughs> there, there are Buddhas and saints, other spirits around, right, uh, that, that are watching, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so that, you know, we, we, we don't dare to do anything careless, right? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so therefore, you know, so a person of Tao is like a big, unshakable mountain, right? Um, why is it, what, what does unshakable mean, right? So our will and aspiration is unshakable, okay? So, uh, you know, no matter what happens or what obstacles or hardships we encounter, that we will always strive to fulfill our aspiration, okay? Also, the external appearance and the internal heart and mind must be simple, pure, and honest, um, just like the raw material that has not yet been carved or cut and polished. Right? So, so it's like that uncarved block, right? <clears throat> um, and uh, so in addition, this, is, this heart and mind must be tolerant and broad-minded, as wide and open as a spacious deep valley. Right? If we can be like this, then we are a person of Tao. So uh, that's what Holy Teacher says. So we have to be, so it's kind of describing that this is, as well, we are Tao cultivators, and this is, so this is how we should be, okay? Um, <clears throat> yeah, and always, you know, to be simple, pure, and honest, I mean, you know, a lot of times, again, that human heart kind of gets in the way and starts, you know, especially when there are people issues, and, and then we start uh, getting emotions, we get upset, we get uh, all, you know, resentment, all these things uh, come into play and, you know, we, we have to just get rid of that. Don't, don't even, uh, don't even go down that path. Okay. Um, uh, so we have, you know, be tolerant, broad-minded. Okay. <clears throat> uh, all right. So, and also, you know, the, this person now is also upbeat, right? This person now is always, you know, 24-7 basically upbeat and cheerful, right? They have, um, so why is he so happy? Because his heart does not have desires like the so-called four cardinal vices of life, right? The, these are like basically alcohol, liquor, you know, sex, wealth, and temper, okay? Bad, you know, getting uh, bad temper, okay? So, and also the paralyzed by greed, etc. Okay, so therefore a spirit is always, is always happy. Uh, disciples, how long can we maintain our happiness? Is it not long, right? Um, usually, yeah, we're not always happy, right? Sometimes you know, our, our mood swings up and down all the time, okay? It doesn't, doesn't stay up all the time. And that's because we have too many things on our mind, too many things that shouldn't be there, okay? So uh, basically, yeah, we, we do sometimes, we, we think too much, right? We think too much about stuff uh, that really, there's, there's nothing to think about, really. I mean, it's like, oh, you know, they said, someone said something to me, they did something, uh, you know, we have to let it go. We have to just not think of anything about it. I mean, because we, we, we are basically thinking more into it than there really is. Maybe, you know, it's, it's, maybe it's not their intention or anything, and yet we kind of put that intention in, in, you know, in, in their mind. I mean, it's like, uh, so, so we're, we're creating this problem out of nothing. Okay. Uh, the person of Tao is uh his conduct is just it's natural everywhere everywhere he is okay um but are we natural right we always feel like we are tied up or restricted by whatever we are doing or by others you know you know kind of you feel like we're restricted by other uh people <clears throat> um so when it comes to learning Tao, there is no other way than to be determined and to take practical steps to learn right uh, a true cultivator does not <laughs> yeah here a true cultivator does not uh, dream while he's sleeping, <laughs> okay? Uh, so the teacher asks, you know, do we dream, right? Uh, and when we are awake, we should not have any worries, right? When we wake up, do we still have worries? And that's because when we are awake, we have too many worries, right? So uh, so when we sleep, we have dreams, okay? So, so yeah, I mean, there's this, you know, the... <laughs> So this is kind of holy teacher explaining, you know, why we have dreams here. Um, therefore, a true cultivator does not dream when asleep, and does not have worries when they're awake. Okay, so 
so yeah, so if we have too many worries, too many things on our mind, uh, then that can translate into uh, <laughs> dreams, I guess, uh, at night, which, you know, for the most part, dreams, uh, th when we have dreams, it's, it's, we don't get a restful night, okay, of sleep. Um, so, uh, but uh, you can, like Holy Teacher says, uh, this is also an indication that we, we maybe uh, worry too much or think too much during the day. Okay, so, so that's something to keep in mind if, if <laughs> you find yourself uh, dreaming all, all the time. Okay, so um, a true cultivator, right, is neither happy, uh, is neither very happy about life uh, or survival, nor hateful or fearful of death. Because a true cultivator regards life and death as natural and ordinary matters, and yeah, that and that's true. Okay, uh, um, if at this moment holy teacher wants to take us back to heaven, are we able to let go of our attachments? <laughs> uh, and you know the 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 people, the the, the staff members there, they said no. <laughs> right. Uh, so basically, we have all these attachments. We can't let it go. Right. It's like oh. Now it's time to go. It's time to, to, to leave this life. Are we ready? Uh, we can just say, well, you know, we have all these, oh, my family, we have fr friends, we have things that we haven't done yet, uh, you know, things like that. We we, uh, we are feel attached to and feel kind of restrained or constrained by. And therefore, uh, because we can't let it go, then, you know, we're not ready to leave, right? Uh, so we are not just bearing the title of a cultivator in name only, right? So, you know, if <laughs> basically Holy Teacher is saying that if we are a true cultivator, then we can leave at any time. It doesn't, you know, we have no attachments. Okay, so that's one of the things that when when it's time to go, we have we cannot have any attachments, right? Um, so uh, let's see, if our, you know, heart and mind, if in our heart and mind we want to return to heaven, then we must take practical steps towards that goal, right? Disciples should know to self-cultivate at any time. Life and death are ordinary matters. Right? Honestly, uh, honestly work and take care of the things that should be done. Um, then if we die at any time, we should not have any misery or hardships. If we are about to return to heaven, think about it. Our temper and faults or deficiencies are many, and we have yet to fulfill our vows. Then what are we to do? Okay, so haven't we failed heaven's grace? Do we know when we are going to die? Because the body and mind of sentient beings are very impermanent, we must cultivate that well. So realize that, yeah, life is, it, it's impermanent, obviously, and it's, it's also unpredictable, right? People can, uh, people not expecting to die, uh, <laughs> suddenly die. And so as a cultivator, we have to be ready. And we have to basically seize the moment, right? Seize the day, uh, carpe diem, right? So always do our best to fulfill our duties, to uh, do what we are supposed to do. Uh, and then when the time comes, you know, basically we, if we've put in our best effort and everything that we should, should be doing, should have done, then we essentially will have left nothing undone and we were ready to leave, okay? So... Um, so there's nothing to, to hold us back, right? Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so here, Holy Teacher asks, you know, what, what is the greatest punishment in life? Um, does anyone know? <laughs> uh, basically, you know, Holy Teacher said, it's regret, right? So Holy Teacher wishes that, uh, sorry. But Holy Teacher wishes that uh, we do not wait until the end to regret. Right? And reminds us that holy that Tao is true, the principles are true, and heaven's mandate is true. Okay. Uh, and also that the karmic debts are also true, okay, are, are real. <laughs> okay. Uh, so our debts, our karmic debts, those are real too. Right? Holy teacher wishes that we take advantage of the opportunity to cultivate and practice while we are still able to, right? So while we're still, let's say, in control of our bodies. Um, you know, so some people unfortunately we see cases of, you know, a person, unfortunately, they've got some mental uh, disease or, you know, mental some problem, okay, and that's preventing them from cultivating, uh, well, I mean, they, they can't even cultivate, they, they, they're, they can't function very well normally either. So, 
Uh, and then also if, if our body, you know, our health is bad, I mean, if we, if we get cancer or we get some terrible accident uh, and we're, we're very handicapped or, or whatever, we're bedridden, uh, then, you know, how can we cultivate? So therefore, we have to basically, uh, again, seize the opportunity, right? Every opportunity that we have, uh, seize it. Don't let it pass, okay? Um, you know, so, uh, you know, we have to fulfill our vows uh, well so that we can repay heaven's grace, right? Everything that you know, we have in life is due to heaven's grace. And especially our receiving the Tao, um, this, our ticket to, <laughs> to, our ticket out of here, right? our ticket to transcend this cycle of life and death uh, is given to us because of heaven's grace. And so we have to uh, appreciate that and be grateful uh, and do our best. And, you know, so repent of anything that we've done wrong, uh, rectify, cor correct ourselves, uh, transform ourselves for the better, improve ourselves, cultivate well uh, to, to repay this grace. Okay. All right. So, so do not be uh, you know, fixated on appearances, right? Um, we shouldn't have like stereotype images of, of people, of others. All right. Uh, so <laughs> the Holy Teacher is saying, just like we have a certain fixed image or stereotype of what Holy Teacher should look like, right? So it's always uh if you if you've seen the the you know we we see as depicted on uh, like on tv or in the movies right he's always he's wearing this patch this patchwork of i mean this robe that's all patched has patches all over you know this uh he only has maybe one shoe or something or he has a broken fan and you know whatnot okay so so we have a certain image of what holy teacher looks like uh but that's really uh, what it does is kind of it, it pigeonholes, just like the you know, same thing with actors, right? So when they play a character, uh, people think, oh yeah, he, you know, this is this is him, this is her. You know, they they are this character, right? Uh, they can't play anything else, right? So the, 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 that's the same the uh, same uh, uh, similar thing, right? So then basically, holy teacher, you know, it makes it difficult for him to be free and comfortable, right? If holy teacher does not want to wear the robe and accessories, right, the fan and the gourd. Uh, that we added, then walking around will be more comfortable. <laughs> All right, so does it mean that holy teacher cannot be without the robe and accessories? All right, therefore, we are the holy teacher of our uh, Buddha nature. I mean, so, you know, again, it's not in the appearance, not in the form. Okay, so obviously holy teacher is holy teacher because <laughs> of what he's, you know, his spirit um, and what he's done and what he does. Okay, and, you know, his mission and all that. All right, so these are all kind of intangible stuff for the most part. Right? It's not the tangible form that defines who, or characterizes who Holy Teacher is. Right, so the same thing. Uh, we are also we should not uh, be fixated on the forms and appearances. Uh, cultivation uh, requires also requires courage. Right? How can we inspire this courage uh, to become self-reliant? Right, do we wait until something happens that forces us to inspire our courage? Okay, so um, this is not simple and fun. Right? Do we want to wait until our loved ones die to realize the seriousness of the situation? Okay? Or perhaps when something happens to us, then we realize that time does not wait for anybody. All right. All right. So or maybe we want to see some channeling visitation. Okay. So uh, perhaps by a demon. <laughs> okay. Or some karmic creditor to inspire us. Okay. So this has happened in various Dharma classes or, or other classes where you have uh, basically, a demon uh, or an asura who, who channels, um, and they're 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 very vicious. Or uh, I don't know. I mean, they're they're kind of mean. I mean, they 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 they're 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 trying to appeal to our uh, the bad side, basically our greed, you know, our three poisons, uh, our desires, all that stuff. Okay, uh, and then also karmic creditors. Right? We've seen that you can you can see that too, where uh, basically they've. Uh, they just want to seek vengeance, okay, from us. <clears throat> all right, so so we shouldn't. Uh, all right, so to to be inspired in this way is not good. So so basically, we're using these forms to try to these external forms to try to inspire us, and that that's not good. All right, so we must become self reliant and not rely on external unnecessary stimulus or motivation to know how to move forward or progress. 
right? So again, that ultimately has to come from within. If we depend on these external uh, stimulus, stimuli, or motivation, uh, you know, if that motivation, that external motivation isn't there, then that means we're not going to progress. We're not going to do anything. So, so it's that we have to have that inner drive to, to, to push ourselves forward, okay? Uh, we can't depend on anything external. Uh, the disciples must cultivate and do it in earnest. Right? It cannot be because of external appearances and much less so that we confirm that Tao is true because, let's say, a temple is beautiful, right? So, so we want to say, oh, wow, look at this, uh, this branch of the Tao. They, they, they have such huge temples, so many people. Uh, then that must prove that Tao is, Tao is true. Okay, so this is, again, we're using forms to try to then uh, verify or confirm uh, that the, uh, the Tao, but that's, that's, not, that's not right, okay? So we shouldn't be doing that. Um, so neither does it depend on the number of people in the temple or how big the temple is, okay? So neither uh, does it depend on whether people in the temple, you know, they wear neckties, are very refined or gentle, or are very learned, well-learned, and have good temperament. Right? Tao is not about looking at external appearance. External appearances are like the stars, which are for the purpose of providing a contrast. Right? So, so if we look up in the night sky, we see the stars, we tend to focus on those stars. Okay? Uh, but actually, you know, so all the is kind of using this example, saying they're there to kind of offset the darkness of space blackness of space, okay, uh, to con yeah, as a contrast. All right, well, we must cultivate ourselves and nurture our internal virtues. The external appearances are just to help us cultivate, okay? So, um, again, those, we, we, we can't rely on the external things. Um, they can help us, of course, uh, but, again, we cannot become attached to them, right? Uh, if if it's expedient, right? If it's the the happens to be the convenient thing uh, that we have uh, that it can help us at that time, then sure, that that's that's great. But again, once it's uh, it's passed, it, you know that that can, the condition is no longer there. Uh, just let it go, and we we still go back to uh, relying on ourself. Okay, so cultivating Tao is to simplify the heart and mind. Uh, this is the Tao and uh, this is the Tao and the Dharma. Okay, so um, just like you know, one of the uh, one of the twelve relinquishments, right? We talked about in the, in the past. One is, is to relinquish complexity, learn to simplify, and create a straightforward life. Yeah, so that that's that's really what we need to do. Again, we we make things too complicated for ourselves. Okay, uh, and not not just you know in the in the uh, external or in the appearances or, or, or in the physical aspect, but in the mental right aspect, uh, that's we do that right. So again, the too much thinking, the worrying, and all that stuff. Um, all right. So today's cultivation is basically too simple. Uh, it's comfortable, right? It's self-indulgent or undisciplined. Right? Without being solemn, surpassing ourselves, or you know, kind of like pushing ourselves to uh, excel, right, and broadening our spirit, uh, we are unable to demonstrate Tao with our own bodies, right? So, uh, you know, because because if we compare our cultivation, our situation today, even with the pandemic, doesn't matter. Um, we're not living like in a war torn. In, in the middle of a war zone, okay, and cultivating in the middle of a war zone or in the middle of a famine or things of that nature, which, uh, so, so it really is uh, much easier for us to cultivate than it was for, you know, our predecessors, uh, people, uh, cultivators of the past. Uh, so we really shouldn't, um, uh, but, you know, so we realize that, and but don't get too, uh, don't indulge too much in this comfort, right? This comfortable way of cult because then that that leads to laxity. You know, being uh, very comfortable, very relaxed, and not casual, basically. So we have that's why we have to have those rules and regulations, and we have to kind of have. Sometimes we have to be strict, okay, and we have to be solemn. Uh, it's not anything goes, okay. So uh, that that's something that we have to know, okay. Keep in mind. 
Uh, otherwise, you know, we, we really can't. How do people see, you know, well, they, they don't see any difference between cultivators and normal, regular people, ordinary people, right? So we have to show that we are different. We are kind of a class above, if you will. Um, okay, so there is, there is only sincerity in cultivating Tao. Without patience and perseverance, there is no way to cultivate for a long time, right? So we definitely have to persevere uh, and have patience. Uh, we can't expect results, you know, right away. Uh, you know, we, we may not even see real, you know, big uh, or significant results until the very end. You know, so, uh, so definitely patience, perseverance, and, you know, obviously the faith to keep us going. Um, uh, there's, uh, so if we do not even follow the Buddha or temple rules and regulations, our cultivation will become very casual and arbitrary in the end, right? Uh, although the Dharma is an expedient method, but if we have temple responsibilities and come and go as we wish, uh, then we have left the scope of cultivation and become casual and arbitrary. Yeah, so especially right, since, again, he's talking about staff members, you know, if we, we have a duty, we have responsibilities, uh, let's say, in the temple, uh, you know, we can't just decide, oh, you know, I'll, I'll come in, you know, an hour later or, or, <laughs> or I'll leave early or whatever. Right? We have to perform our duties. Uh, the, uh, otherwise, it's, it's just too, we're, we're not really cultivating, okay? Uh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we must not follow the feelings in our cultivation, right? Human feelings, sentiment, uh, emotions. All right, this is an easy way to go astray. Uh, we must, uh, oh wait, so this is, uh, all right, so this is a new section here, right? So a tranquil mind results in a level path. Uh, well, the, and the Chinese use the same word, uh, but yeah, so it can mean different things. I mean, but you could say a level mind, a calm mind, uh, a still um, composed mind, right? Tranquil, quiet mind, all that. Okay. Then a path of cultivation, of course. So, so talking about this path going of cultivation, so the, as if our mind can be still, calm, right, tranquil, then uh, the, the, the path, our cultivation, will also be much easier, all right? All right, so uh, getting back to this here. Okay, so we must have patience, right, and do not stop or give up until we return to heaven. Right? All phenomena are caused by mischief in our heart and mind. Okay, so caused by our desires and attachments, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, and he says, pleasant words are not necessarily good words, and good words do not necessarily sound pleasant. Yeah, so, you know, Holy Jesus is saying, well, you know, the, the words that he's speaking here, yeah, they may not sound too pleasant to us, um, but they are, you know, the... So, and he's saying, you know, so they don't always sound good, okay? But but they're they're... They're words that we need to hear, okay? So, so I remember, um, at, at least in one um, uh, channeling uh, reunion with our predecessor, Da uh, Da okay? So uh, he, he, asked, <laughs> he asked us, oh, do you want to hear good words, you know, pleasant-sounding words, or do you want to hear true words, <laughs> okay? Uh, and so, so basically because, you know, if... Yeah, they can they can say you know pleasant sounding words to us, but those aren't going to help us, right? It's only the true words who which maybe they not they may, may not sound pleasant to us, uh, but uh, they are spoken uh, sincerely and earnestly to help us, right? They are pointing out our faults, uh, things that we need to correct, right? That we need to improve in uh, in our lives, okay? In our in our cultivation. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, we record all our actions and deeds, right? Good deeds, bad deeds, wrong deeds, they're all recorded. Um, so this is, we've talked about before, the, there's this black box, right? That each of us, we all have this black box. <laughs> and this black box, well, it, it has infinite storage. So, so basically, and anything, you know, all our actions, whether they're physical actions, you know, words or thoughts, uh, they're all recorded, right? Um, and so, 
um, if we can cultivate with purity and stillness and not let the heart and mind be too casual or, or chaotic, right? let the mind transcend the phenomenal or the forms and enter into the absolute state. Okay, so that's like, that's basically the, the highest state, okay, the state of stillness. Um, then we are slowly learning to let go, right? If we can let go of attachments and stubbornness, let go of love, let go of seeking fame and fortune, let go of hatred and resentment, right? Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, for example, I mean, if, if we originally loathe, you know, hate someone or disgusted by someone, but we can let that go. We can forgive and forget, right? The fact that we once resented the person uh, and got, and we were able to get rid of any thoughts or any intention or inkling of vengeance in our mind, then because of this relinquishment, right? Any image or shadow of this automatically disappears. Uh, so those, those basically those karmic seeds then disappear. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, this is the Buddha's pure and still mind without ego or intention or intentions. When it is time to return to heaven, the karma will not manifest. All right? Why? Because at the end of our cultivation and life, we are pure, undefiled, right? Unblemished in the Buddha's realm. Right? <clears throat> Thoughts and desires will never cling to us. When we return to the state of liberation, our light naturally shines on everything. There will, no, uh, there will be no recorder either, right? So at that point, we're, we're, we are in that state of basically the Buddha mind, okay? Uh, that Buddha, the absolute state. There, there's nothing to record, <laughs> basically, okay? Um, uh, and even if we return and deal with things in the phenomenal world, like, you know, even like, so the Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, right? If they come back to this world again uh, to, to perform, you know, carry out a mission, Right? There will be no recording, right? Because again, they are in that state, that perfect, uh, you can say that perfect absolute state uh, where they do not plant seeds of karma. Okay, so we are very at ease. Uh, if our heart and mind is still not at ease, then, you know, the, like the seven emotions, right? Joy, rage, happiness, sorrow, love, hate, and desires, and also the six desires, Right, of our senses, right, the six senses, uh, our physical senses plus the mind sense, right, they keep increasing, then our mind and thoughts will continuously form knots, right, and the recorder will continuously record. Okay, so therefore, when we go back, we will have a long time, uh, no, he's saying when we go back to heaven, uh, we will have a long time to watch a very long video of the recording, right, so there, there's this thing, uh, I don't know what it's called in English, the the Nijing Tai or whatever. Uh, yeah, but it's basically uh, when we go back and you know they play back this uh, the recording basically of, of what we've done or, or said or whatever, everything, even our thoughts, uh, for us to see because you know say, well, this is what you did, right? And sometimes we 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 still we argue, say, no, I didn't do that, and they'll show it to us and say, oh, yeah, we it's it's it's, it's recorded. So, so, but anyways, so the the idea, the point is. When we can get to that state of the absolute state of mind, right? No attachments, uh, no desires, no emotions, none, none of these things, then we won't be planting those karmic seeds. There won't be any recording, all right? Then that's truly, that's true liberation. That's true free, being free, okay? So that's really what we should try, strive to achieve. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we did not cultivate well. Um, right, because we want <laughs> these things, right? Comfort, enjoyment, status, reputation, and love, right? So cultivation originally should be very easy to do, but why can't we do it well? Uh, it's because, uh, because of these things, right? Um, so that is why we are still caught up in this, the fate that we have, right? Um, now, when people talk about us, do we feel that they maybe don't understand us, right? Like, they, you know, they, <laughs> they talk about us as if, oh, yeah, you know, this person is like this, but yeah, and we think, oh, no, they don't understand. Um, so this is the application of the human heart and mind, having attachment and ego, the false image of the self, right? We are all stuck in the five elements, right? This, this is the phenomenal world, the world of forms. Um, 
uh, unable to transcend the forms and enter the absolute state. Right, this shows that we are still in the realm of forms and phenomena. Okay, so of course, when we see people happy, we are also happy. But when we see people angry, then we feel uncomfortable. Right, this is because we are still in the realm of forms. So disciples, right? How are we supposed to cultivate? Um, basically, to transcend the forms and enter the absolute state, right? So, uh, yeah, basically we need to uh, not let these things bother us, for one. I mean, like, it, it, these are all external conditions, right? Uh, that whether uh, people are, are treat us well or not, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, that, that's all external, and it shouldn't really, <laughs> dif, you know, determine how we should, how we feel, or how we should be, okay? So if someone says something to or about us, and we can be calm and composed without reacting, uh, while at the same time be grateful and tolerant, then we have transcended forms and entered the absolute state, right? So this, again, there's no... Uh, you can say there's no like uh, reaction based on like feelings or emotions or desires or anything like that or ego. Okay, um, and so uh, but so basically our you know we can respond in the right, uh, quote unquote the right way the appropriate way the the uh, satisfactory way okay um, without causing any other problems okay or without creating any karma right uh, okay so. Uh, so we cannot say that if others praise us, we will not be moved, right? We are very good and not make mistakes, right? So, so on the other hand, you know, if it's like praise, we're getting praise from others, uh, you know, then we say, oh yeah, I feel good, and I feel yeah, that's right, I, <laughs> I'm, I am good, I am that good, right? Uh, so uh, because when people talk about our mistakes, um, you know, and we still lose our calm and composure, then this is not correct, right? So, so, uh, so we must still think thank, thank them, and be grateful to them. Right? If we can be like this, <coughs> excuse me, uh, every time uh, to be able to transcend the forms, then we have entered into the absolute state. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, we have to, we have to learn to <coughs> I'm tolerant and forgiving, you know, if, if they uh, said or did something uh, bad to us or wrong to us, I and mean, we have to relinquish. Just let it go. Let it go. Okay. Uh, all right. So, <clears throat> so even though um, we are staff members right, and above, okay. So, holy teacher can see that too many disciples do not fully realize the Tao. Um, that that is to say, we have not yet fully understood. Right? Even though our transmitting masters have worked hard to encourage us, we are still caught up in the human sentiments or relationships. Right. Uh, and are deficient or lacking in the in the Tao principles, okay, uh, and or in the practice of those principles. Putting um, uh, the cultivation requires us to be self awake and aware, self aware, right? To take control of ourselves and not let other people restrain or bind us. Again, so this is um, if we fall for the human sentiment, uh, I'll call it a trap then that binds us, okay? That, that, that makes it difficult for us to, to <laughs> I mean, then, then we get caught up in that, all that, all the whole thing. Uh, and so we have to not fall, fall into that trap um, so that uh, then, then, you know, cultivation will be smooth, okay? <clears throat> in terms of, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, in terms of cultivation and practice, right? Have disciples really lived our lives uh, accordingly? Okay, just like the lecturers, right? When we teach the principles to people, we always hope that they can put it into practice and change or improve themselves. But have we ourselves practiced it very well? <laughs> okay, so uh, again, you know, we have to practice what we preach, uh, especially us who, you know, to teach, right? To give the classes. Um, you know, I, you know, we were not perfect. We, we, we are still learning too uh, as we go along. Uh, so, but the important thing is that we not have that attitude of arrogance of saying, oh yeah, I know better than you guys, uh, because I'm teaching you guys, but if I still don't do it, if I don't practice it as well, then, you know, that, that's, that's being hypocritical. So, so we, uh, we have to be careful, right? We have to be humble. We always have to be humble, actually. So, um, 
Okay, so uh, disciples must think about it, right? In our interactions and dealings with people, right, it is impossible for us to always get along and, you know, have everything be uh, turn out to be satisfactory. Especially as the first thing we must be able to do is to basically uh, this this directly saying it's like to bear our mouth, basically to control our mouth and words, you know, basically, okay. Uh, so when interactions or dealings with people are not satisfactory or uh, maybe, you know, they get heated, uh, if we can control our mouth and words, our facial expression and our heart and mind and not show any anger, right, without a thought of taking offense, uh, then we can be considered to have some skill in our practice and cultivation, right? So this is, <laughs> this is part of forbearance, right? So, so here, specifically here is, is in essence, is forbearance of uh, kind of like forbearance of the mouth, right? Uh, 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 and you know, all of this is not in our words, but in our actions, right? So finally, we must start with self-control to overcome material desires. Man's desires are endless, okay? So whether it is the five desires of wealth, beauty, name or reputation okay food and sleep right uh these are so these are pretty kind of basic basic desires i guess that most a lot of people have right especially well maybe sleep for some people <laughs> food right uh but uh you know the sixth sense forms of sight sound smell taste touch and ideas right or thoughts um so people are bound and, and shackled by are chained by these five desires and six sense forms, right? So again, we have to be able to let these go, right? Um, to break that this the chain <laughs> that's that we're chained to these things. Okay. Uh, today, if we want to learn the Tao and cultivate the Tao, we must start by breaking free of the five desires and six sense forms. Otherwise, if our mind is not pure and still, then how do we settle our body and mind? Okay, so that again is very important because these are the things, uh, these desires, um, they affect. You can say they they, they defile our spirit or, or they disturb our spirit, uh, and so they dis, they disturb our mind, uh, and therefore, uh, you know, we we won't be able to cultivate well. Um, you know, this, because these are kind of contrary. They're pulling us in in the other directions, the wrong directions. Okay, uh, away from cultivation. Right, so it is better to rectify our heart and mind, right, than than to just have a tidy or neat appearance, uh, you know, or good appearance, right. So how do we change uh, or transform this heart and mind, right? When the heart and mind changes, the forms change with it. Okay, so uh, if there is always hatred and complaints in you know people's hearts and minds, then the hatred and complaints will be written on their face. <laughs> okay, so so basically, uh, you know that that that's kind of you might say that that that's that's how people can right people can read us right by by our look our appearance um, because you know it shows it shows on our in our appearance what's inside. Okay, uh, and so um, so people have an inferiority complex. Um, Oh, oh, sorry, and just, yeah, so so basically, so it's important that, you know, we, we do kind of correct ourselves in in our heart and mind, right? Because that's, you know, just because we dress up well, um, uh, we have a, a kind of a, a neat appearance, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, what's in our heart and, mi our heart and mind is, is, is pure, okay? Um, and it will kind of show in, in, our, in our facial expressions or, or whatever, our appearance, okay? Uh, people have an inferiority complex uh, oh, because they lack self-confidence, right? When people say something about them or, or to them, right, they feel sad and low in spirit and their expression becomes gloomy and depressed, right? So disciples, uh, you know, the way of cultivating will become more and more painful in that way, right? So this is because we care too much about what people say, uh, you know, about us or to us, okay? Um, again, this is kind of an ex the external condition, uh, and we're letting it affect us. Okay, so we shouldn't do that. Shouldn't let that external condition affect us. Right? A, a more cheerful state of mind is to change and transform our state of mind. Right. So I've <laughs> I've talked about this in baths. Like we have to flip that switch in our mind. Right. Flip that mental switch. Um, it can be sad 
or it can be, you know, whatever, and it could be happy, okay, or cheerful. Uh, so it, it really depends on us. It shouldn't depend on anything external. Uh, if we decide that we want to be cheerful, then we should just be cheerful. Uh, don't, don't, doesn't care. We shouldn't care about what people say or do. Uh, a more cheerful state of mind is to change and transform our state. Of, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, how do we change our state of mind? Um, all right. So it is basically to, oh, uh, right. It's basically to, uh, let's see. How do we change? Oh, okay. It's not all. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that Chinese, <laughs> you know, I just say, oh, you know, this, this is, this is interesting. Maybe holy teacher is just kind of like, um, it's almost like a, a, a uh, like a, a hint or, or a double, had double meaning here, but, but he's talking about sh our shortcomings, point other pe people pointing out our shortcomings, but basically, you know, it's also <laughs> saying like the point that point transmission when we receive the Tao, right, is, is also required to, to, achieve that that uh, completeness okay so um so yeah so it is because holy teachers it is because we have shortcomings that others must point them out to us okay so um right if we don't have any shortcomings then there's no need for others to point out anything right uh therefore when we are off by a little we end up being off by a lot right? originally let's say 100 points is a perfect score but we got only 99 points so we're off by one point and we cannot achieve perfection. Therefore, if we do not get that one point <laughs> in cultivation, then we cannot become perfect. Okay, so so again, this is kind of like, yeah, maybe hinting at, oh yeah, we, we also need that uh, one point uh, transmission, you know, that point when we receive the Tao. Okay, so, but anyways, uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's just that, uh, so the same thing when we're cultivating uh, after we receive the Tao that, yeah, sometimes we need to get that pointed, something pointed out to us <laughs> that, you know, that's the point that we're missing, right? That we were at, maybe we're at 99 uh, points uh, and we, we we're missing that one point. We, we don't see it in ourselves, right? We don't see it. Uh, we don't see that deficiency or that fault in ourselves. And so others have to point it out to us. So we should be grateful. <laughs> Actually, we should be very happy uh, that other people will, are able to point it out to us. Uh, so uh, now Holy Teacher... To, you know, he, he asked uh, some class member, I guess, to, to draw a heart on the blackboard or something. So someone drew a lot of hearts. All right, so Buddha says, I mean, Buddha has, right, this, this year, Buddha has 84,000 methods or ways to ferry 84,000 types of, you know, hearts, or minds. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know if it's that specific number, but it, anyways, it's just, it's basically one size does not fit all, okay? So... On the other hand, so people always set their own standard too high and suffer if they fail to reach it. Therefore, it is best to lower the standard to zero, <laughs> return to zero or empty, right? If there is no comparison, uh, then we can be very happy, okay? So, uh, you know, Holy Teacher is not saying that we should not have standards, okay? So basically, when we apply standards, uh, we can apply standards to ourselves. But if we set our standard, let's say, maybe too high, it's unreachable. Uh, that, that'll be tough too. So it shouldn't be, uh, well, you know, we, we, we say, let's say, I mean, we should all have the standard of say, you know, we want to achieve Buddhahood. Okay. So now maybe some people think, oh, that's too high. Um, but actually it's, it is achievable, right? Um, if we put our mind to it, if we really, uh, have, again, have the perseverance, the faith, the sincerity, uh, put in the effort, um, and yeah, we we can get there, okay, and do all the right we have to do all the right things. Um, and it, it it is it's not it's not impossible, right? But we definitely don't want to apply standards to other people, right? We cannot, you know, the cultivation is remember I say it's it's uh, an individual matter, right? Our holy teacher said that before it's an individual matter, right? We cannot uh, force other people to cultivate, say, oh, they have to cultivate to my standard <laughs> or some other standard, right? Uh, we can't do that. Uh, and when we do that, unfortunately, when we're setting other people's standards, or basically we having expectations for uh, other people's cultivation, then that leads to ultimately disappointment, right? And ultimately like misery, basically. So, so cultivation shouldn't be miserable. So uh, one way to do that is, yeah, we, don't apply standards to other people, right? So that's why he says, lower it to zero. Set, it to, set the standard to zero. 
Okay. Uh, you know, especially, you know, we, we, sh we should push ourselves, but again, we can try to encourage others, but again, you know, we can't, as much as we want to, uh, let's say, you know, we, we, will, we want everyone to become a Buddha, uh, to, uh, but everyone, you know, their affinity, their karma is all different. Uh, the the amount of and ultimately it's it's up to them right the, the, how much effort they put in you know and all that so we have no control over that so uh, why beat ourselves beat beat up ourselves over that okay so um, right so you know, basically don't compare with others um, so uh, a perfect heart and mind um, is the Buddha nature and conscience okay so we gradually have to cultivate until perfection. Originally, there's actually no need to cultivate the self, the true nature, the Buddha nature, right? It is only because we have bad temper and shortcomings that we must cultivate and restore our self nature to its original pure Buddha nature state. Okay, so um, again, we've been defiled, basically. We've through, and, and it's no fault of anyone else. It's, it's our own fault. Uh, become, you know, we have desires, we have, we develop this ego, this false sense of self, and we have attachments, all these things uh, that caused us to become defiled and we're no longer perfect or pure. Uh, and therefore we have to, and that's why we have to cultivate, to get rid of those things, uh, to become, to restore ourselves to that pure state again, right? Uh, holy teacher sees many disciples are often doing things that they later regret. Right, so why do they regret? Because of our words, our negligence, our carelessness. The look in our eyes or an action that hurt someone, we regret it, you know, uh, later, af afterwards. Right, <clears throat> are disciples always regretting something every day? Right, are we uh, re uh, regretting something we said or failed at from yesterday or earlier? Right, if we are regretting every day and trying to make up for what we did, before, then how can we deal with the matters of today? <laughs> so if we're constantly dealing with with our regrets. You know, we you know how can we do anything new or you know what we're supposed to do today, right? So therefore, we must understand the principles in cultivation. Right? We must uh, be pure and still in cultivation. When the heart and mind can be pure and still, then when any situation arises, we naturally can respond to and handle it appropriately or uh, you know, perfectly or, you know, satisfactorily, right? So that is like, uh, again, so the, the having that pure and still heart and mind and dealing with things. So that is, again, no ego, right? No emotion involved, no uh, desires, uh, no attachments, no biases, no, no uh, dualistic <laughs> views, you know, no four images, no three minds, none of that stuff. Okay, uh, so that means it's like a mirror, a perfect mirror facing any situation. It re it's reflected exactly as it is. So in that sense, you can say it's perfectly objective. Okay, there's no subjective view uh, of the situation. And therefore, it can be dealt with purely, you know, in, in an objective way. Uh, it, it may not necessarily be that there's only one way. I mean, it could be there could be many ways to deal with something. Um, so objective does not mean that is, there's only one way. But uh, you know, it can be done because there is. You know, you can say that there's no. You can say that there may not be one perfect way, uh, perfect you know response to something. Okay, so uh, there could be, but but usually there's probably not. Uh, there, there could be a range of different uh, responses that are all, we can say, objective, okay? And once we've responded objectively, the situation is dealt with and it's over and it's gone, and that image is no longer reflecting in the mirror, right? Because it's, it's no longer there. It's, it's already been dealt with, it's done. And that's how it should be. There's no attachment, right, after it's done, right? So we're not still thinking about, oh, you know, uh, maybe it should have been this or, or, or whatever. Uh, no regrets, okay? We did the right thing, quote-unquote. Uh, you know, we did what was uh, appropriate, um, and we did it objectively. Uh, so then that's it. Just let it go. And, and it's, it's completely gone, right? So that in that way, we don't create, uh, 
we you know we would avoid creating these planting these karmic seeds too right okay okay so um so cultivation should be very at ease and cheerful right if we look miserable tense or wear a long face every day uh, and we tell people hey that was good right cultivation is good <laughs> and will they believe it okay so such words are not persuasive because people do not have confidence in us and our words will be powerless, right? So, so again, yeah, so, uh, you know, holy teacher or the Buddhas and saints, they, you know, they're always reminding us that, um, yeah, we have to look like, uh, you know, that our cultivation is good. I mean, we can't just, you know, say it. Uh, it has to look, look good too, <laughs> okay? So, uh, so we can't be all miserable and say, oh, yeah, that was great, that was great. And, you know, it's like, oh, people see that, you know, we're miserable. And so, so, so why would they want to do that, cultivate? So uh, just same thing, like, uh, you know, uh, being healthy, right? Uh, being, now we say, oh, yeah, you know, we, we, should, stop, we should stop eating meat, right? Be, be vegetarian, be vegan. And yet if we're not eating healthy and, you know, they see us like, wow, how come we're all like, so so thin, you know, skin and bones, or 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 we, we have diseases, you know, uh, you know, that's not very convincing, right? So we have to, uh, you know, try to match basically <laughs> match our words with 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 the the appearance as well, you know, and what we're doing. Okay. Um, okay. So jade cannot become useful unless it is chiseled. Right? Same way, metal or gold is not worth much if it is not refined. Uh, people who do not learn do not know the principles of humanity. So what about qi? Okay, so uh, Holy Deed, you're using, using the word qi. Um, and I, I'm taking that to mean like temper, you know, temperament or maybe attitude. Um, so we should fear it, right? Um, what should we fear the most? What, what do we fear most about, uh, most from, um, you know, pop, you know, like show, you know, uh, <laughs> like to show, show off or whatever, right? Uh, pride and arrogance, basically. Okay, so thinking that we are great, but it will appear even smaller. Okay, so Holy Teacher still thinks that heaven and earth are great and God Almighty is the greatest. So there, we have no, really, we have, <laughs> uh, we cannot say that we are great uh, in the face of, you know, heaven and earth, okay, or and God, you know, or even, or even, you know, the, the Buddhas or, or anyone. I mean, you know, it's you can say it's all relative, and and we are not uh, that great, okay. So so we can't, we shouldn't have that attitude, right? Um, so that again, you know, humble. We have to be humble, okay. <clears throat> uh, so from the perspective of a Jinzu, okay, what Confucius calls a Jinzu, which is, you can say, is the superior or noble person. Um, this greatness refers to the great learning of complete virtue. Okay, so right, that's one of the four books, the great learning. Um, a person of complete virtue will put the great in, in the back and put the small in the front. So basically, they're, they're, they're humble, okay? So they're not going to they're gonna, not gonna show that they're old they're, or say that they're, they're great, okay? Um, and they, that, that goes kind of, they try to, actually, they kind of keep that hidden, basically. And, and they appear very humble, so that's like the small, okay? So, uh, and why do the ancients say to sacrifice the small self to complete or perfect the greater self, okay? Um, uh, because no matter how, the high, how high the academic qualifications, you know, and the knowledge are, Right, they are just common sense knowledge, right? So in terms of like uh, you know our regular learning, like what we learn in school, right? All these knowledge, uh, it's it's basically very it's it's pedestrian. It's it's common knowledge. It's uh, you know even though it's you know you might be in a specialized field uh, of learning, but uh, it's still anyone can learn it basically. Okay, uh, and and it may not necessarily help everyone. Okay. Um, Okay, so in terms of common sense knowledge, everyone should learn it or can, can learn it. But in terms of moral principles and ethics, right, the ordering, let's say, of old to young, right, there's this natural order um, uh, from senior, like, say, to junior, um, the distinction between male and female, relationships between husband and wife, friends, 
siblings and you know like leaders and subjects uh, all have their principles okay so these are the the five cardinal relationships that Confucius talks about uh, these are the principles of the five cardinal relationships it is what everyone must humbly learn right if we can do it then it is called great all right so then if we can perform well uh in all because we all wear like different hats right we we all are involved in several different types of these five relationships um let's see we are probably i mean we may or may not have siblings um but and i i'm assuming that we we all have friends of some kind uh and oh, okay we may not you know husband and wife that may not be but all the other relationships we we are involved in okay in one way or another and so uh, to be great, to be considered great, we have to perform them well according to the principles that Confucius talks about. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So if I had uh, said anything wrong or uh, made mistakes, um, I asked the Buddhas for forgiveness and also I asked the transmitting masters and lectures for their corrections. Thank you. Uh, 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 I just want to mention. Uh... The one point, the enlightenment, in the uh, Buddha no. Nature class, uh, lecture Liu says uh, the one point is very important because uh, even the ordinary temple, uh, the reputable temple, uh, they are cultivated too. So no matter how well they cultivate, all right, so they, they are missing the one point. So uh, after the uh, the best uh, best way they can go back to temple is only reach to uh, temporary heaven. When they finish, they still need to uh, reincarnation. But we got one point, right? We received Tao. We got one point from our holy teacher. So that means uh, heaven recognized uh, and confirmed that we are the candidate of the future saints. All right, so we we are qualified. If we cultivate very well, we can go back to permanent heaven. So the one point is very, very important. That's why people did not receive the, the uh, did not have a chance to receive the, the Tao. Uh, yeah, um, it's not, uh, that's incomplete. So the one point is very, very important. We are so lucky. We have to cut it very, very well. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So, so that's why. The, yeah. When you're saying that, Holy Dear, you're saying that we, we need that one point to be complete. Yeah. So, so that that you know basically the point transmission from receiving the Tao. That that you know other just like lecture she was saying the you know other cultivators who have not received the Tao they may achieve ninety nine points. But they're missing that one point for to achieve perfection. So, uh, and they're going to still reincarnate. So, um, uh, yeah. So that that's so we're very yeah we are very fortunate that we have this affinity. Um, and you, you know we can say it's it's also due to you know, it's due, we have that foundation to be able to receive the Tao to, and now to to be able to learn and cultivate. Uh, so we should do, definitely do our best. And, and again, don't. Uh, we, we 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 need to repay heaven's grace. Okay, this is all because of heaven's grace, and so that's why we have to do our best. Um, do put in our best effort. 